All right, so what do I mean by surviving against the Beetle Bloods? I'm talking about the situations where the ghost is like just chain hunting you or like you've used the curse possession too much so now you're at zero sanity or just you're at zero sanity in general or maybe you just have really horrible friends and they're trolling you or like baiting you into getting the ghost to kill you all the time hopefully this guide will fix some of that so what i want to do is i want to do a couple contracts the first one being uh simulating what it's like to be like a, a low level player but there's a twist so in our custom settings here we've got the player tab here and uh we're starting out with zero sanity so you got to know that as soon as you hit zero sanity, the ghost can hunt you. It doesn't matter what ghost it is. It can hunt you as soon as you walk in the door or in that instance. OK, so we're going to jump into Tanglewood here and we're going to go in and I'm going to pretend like I'm little Timmy. That's this is his first Phasmo mission, right? And I'm going to Tanglewood. And I have no idea that I'm at zero sanity, even though the board tells me I'm at zero sanity. But we've got uh, professional settings enabled, so we've got uh, all three evidences. But we're going to actually try to do this, but we don't have any smudge sticks or sanity pills or crucifixes. So this is going to be interesting. So I'm just going to treat this like it's a regular contract. We're going to go in and uh, I'm going to walk you guys through the kind of how to survive against the unbeatable, essentially. So the biggest thing is, is controlling your emotions. Um, this is not to be confused with my how to stop playing scared guide, which is linked below, or my five steps that you can do to instantly survive more hunts, which is also linked below. This is to kind of piggyback off of those, those two guides uh, to kind of touch on things a little bit. But I think if I were to sum up this video in one, uh, in one point, it would be that knowledge is power because knowing about the cursed possessions is uh and how much sanity they drain knowing about every single ghost is very important um but right now what we're more focused on is trying to find the ghost room all the while trying not to die but that's this is very dangerous i don't even know what our cursed possession is now you gotta know the first solution i'll give you is you gotta understand that when you're at snare ball Okay, uh, and because the ghost did a ghost event right here, uh, there's always a chance that if you're within that sanity threshold of the ghost hunting, it can start its hunt right here, even though this might not be the ghost room. So it started the, the hunt from back there. So I would just say watch, okay? Because I'm gonna show you through my actions here how to survive. It's a hauntu. So first things first, let's just, let's put a, put a pin in this real quick. So the, the thing you got to know is when you hit zero sanity, the ghost, if you don't smudge it, and that's not going to happen with this contract because we don't have smudge sticks. Each hunt, there's a grace period of 25 seconds. So for the next 20 ish seconds or however long I've been talking, the ghost isn't going to hunt me. Okay. Unless it's a demon, in which case it is, see 25 seconds have passed. And it sounds like it started the hunt from back in that same room. So the ghost isn't going to hunt you for 25 seconds after the previous hunt finishes, unless it's a demon, in which case it'll hunt you for 20 seconds or it, it won't hunt you for 20 seconds. So you get a five second less of a grace period. As you can see right now, the ghost is chain hunting me because I'm at zero sanity. But if I didn't know that I would be panicking, but I still have a contract to do. I still got to figure out what type of ghost this is. So how am I going to do this whenever the ghost is constantly hunting me like this well you got to be quick about it because it seems like the ghost started the hunt from back here in this room so we're gonna grab our evidence equipment we're gonna go out and keep going but i'm thinking it's a haunt too because of the knowledge that i have of the ghost outside of the hunt it didn't speed up and that's a pretty good indication that it is a haunt too that we're dealing with so we're looking for freezing evidence freezing temperatures um but what's going to happen is the second I get back in here, the ghost is probably going to hunt. So this is very dangerous. Now, if it changes ghost rooms to like right here or something, then I'm extremely screwed. But now it's hunting again. So what I want to do is when the ghost hunts you, you want to make sure you have your equipment off. You have push to talk enabled so that whenever you are talking or like you're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, like the ghost isn't listening to you. Oh, it's a ride you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you listen very closely, you hear how slow it is right now. But it's sped up tremendously because that spirit box is on and the Raiju loves electronics. 
up. So that tells me that we're dealing with the Raiju. But let's just say I don't know a thing about the ghost, right? Where are you? How old are you? Are you here? That's EMF-5, so that's one of our evidences. It's hunting again. It's going to be extremely fast because I got all those electronics in there. Here how fast it is. It's going to slow down whenever he gets out of the range of the electronics. So it's back in the ghost room. It's coming this way. It's going to go down the steps. And you hear how it returned back to like a normal... It's like... Doom, 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 right? So that tells me it's for sure a Raiju. Now we wanna we wanna check for some other stuff here. But let's keep going. I don't think we need that for a Raiju. But I don't a hundred percent know that this is a Raiju. The ghost is gonna haunt us as soon as we get in there. And we're just if this is truly a Raiju, we are literally screwing ourselves because we're putting all of the all of this stuff to the test here. Now this ghost is a hunting. And it's doing a ghost event right here, which means it can start hunting from right there. So that's gonna be fun. I don't think the Raju has orbs. It does. Yeah, it does have orbs. Okay. Should have dots. It does. Okay, so it's got EMF5, orbs, and then dots. There we go. There's the dots. So we know for a fact that this is that this is in fact a Raiju. So I'm gonna go out and I am going to unless the ghost hunts me as soon as I get to the door and we're clear. Okay. I have a hard time talking about things whenever like the ghost is doing a lot of stuff. I had to focus really hard right there because at zero sanity it gets a little bit crazy. But I'm I'm trying to communicate how to how to make it a little bit easier for you all right so first and foremost let's recap on that contract so little timmy went in to his first contract had no idea he was at zero sanity and shortly after he started going in for the first time the ghost started hunting him right out the gate we didn't really know what was going on and so all timmy could do was just like hide now i didn't use a hiding spot because to be fair the curse the uh, custom settings that i have don't have hiding spots on but I would be running to the garage and like hopping in that locker. Another thing, knowledge is power, like I said. I had the spirit box on and it fell on the ground. And when the ghost came into the living room, it like immediately sped up because it came into contact with the electronic. The only ghost that does that with electronics is the Raiju. And so I immediately knew that that's what we were dealing with. So now Timmy's been grinding a little bit. Now he's going in, he's got his equipment, but he has no idea how to use it. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do that and kind of explain what they do, as well as touching on the cursed possessions as well, because that has an effect on your sanity too. So we're still going in with zero sanity, but let's go back to Tanglewood, this time as the new and improved Timmy, and, uh, and get this ghost real quick and not let the ghost get us all right so we're gonna treat this like it's a regular contract but we've got some some beefier equipment here we're gonna go in we're gonna go find the ghost room because timmy has watched my videos he's watched my guides he's a seasoned phasma professional now and he knows exactly what to do he knows how to find the ghost room quickly and he knows uh like what he's dealing with all right so we're gonna do that right now timmy 2.0 baby coming in all right pretty sure it just threw something Pretty sure it did. We're at zero sanity, so the ghost is going to haunt us. And now Timmy knows that he's at zero sanity because he's he's cracked. So he's he's ballsy enough to deliberately choose to play zero sanity settings. All right. So he knows that the ghost is going to hunt right now. So what he's going to do is this another Raiju? Oh, it's a phantom. Oh, it's a phantom. Or no, it's a it's like a Revenant Earth A. I don't know. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Revenant, Thay, or Moroi because it's very fast. I'm just going to say Revenant because that one always kills me. And that just goes to show that level isn't everything, baby. It was a Thay, Toasty's favorite ghost from my chat. Great. All right, we're going to run that back here. And just because you know a lot about the game doesn't mean you can still outrun a Thay with no smudges. All right, let's do a take two here. All right, so Timmy 2.0. Just trying to go back in. All, all balls to the wall. He's got a big head now because he's got smudges and crucifixes. And uh, he made the mistake of trying to do it like a regular contract. But if Timmy knows that he's at zero sanity, what's he got to do? He's got to go in instead of finding the ghost first, 
the ghost room first. He's gonna go in with smudge sticks to protect himself. The smudge stick prevents the ghost from targeting you for six seconds. This is a tier two, so it's gonna slow the ghost down as well for that six seconds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna rinse and repeat and just hopefully not die this time. Because if I would've had a smudge stick right there, there's no way you can loop a Fey or a Revenant successfully. Okay, so it just did an airball. So Timmy knows for a fact that it is not an Oni because he watched my how to identify every every single ghost in under 60 seconds. All right, so the ghost is hunting. Has he also watched my uh, how to identify a ghost event versus a ghost hunt? And he knows that the lights flickering indicates that the that the ghost is hunting. So this is this is called looping. So the ghost is chasing me, right? But because I've got line of sight broken, it's gonna double back sometimes like that. I've got my smudge stick here, so if the ghost gets too close, I can smudge it, and then I've protected myself. But looping the ghost kind of helps you. It's beneficial to loop the ghost because how are you going to identify an oni or a phantom during a hunt? If you if your back is to it the whole time and plus if the ghost is to your back you can't see how close it is to you so it's better to just like this is why looping the ghost is is perfect um because it helps you identify ghosts or rule them out so we already ruled out oni which has a blinking behavior during a hunt uh, we ruled out phantom because it didn't do the phantom blinking and we just ruled out Jin as well because it turned off the breaker the Jin can't do that so here comes the ghost it's not a yokai either because it came straight to my location this is a little bit better of a looping pattern because now the ghost has no idea where I'm at. And see, he's going away. So it's not a yokai because a yokai came to my location. All right. So anyways, that's not what this video is about. We're trying to survive against unbeatable odds. Sometimes in like what you just saw. Okay, I was about to say, is it a mare? You're not gonna survive because you're up against a Thay or a Revenant or a Moroi when you're at zero sanity. A Moroi and a Thay when you're at zero sanity is like, is almost identical except the Moroi speeds up, the Thay does not. Where can I, what can I do? All right, I have the, I have the monkey paw, which if we're being Timmy 2.0 here, he knows that using the curse possessions drops your sanity, unless it is the monkey paw or tarot cards. Now, the only wish that costs sanity with the monkey paw is wishing for weather, and that costs 25% sanity. And if you don't have that and you try to wish for weather, it's gonna, um, this might actually be a miling. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a miling. <laughs> okay. Listen to how quiet it is, man. Unless it's a mimic, because I don't remember it being that quiet. So what we need to do now is because I don't remember being that quiet at the beginning. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our, um, let's take some sanity pills. Get up to like at least 80 or 60, excuse me. And then we're going to go check for mimic orbs. Because we might be dealing with a mimic here. All right. So if you're wanting to survive against some beautiful odds, knowing knowing the ghost is key, like I've always said, um, being able to identify the ghost outside of the hunt and outside of evidence, that was trippy, bro. Okay. Another air ball. This ghost is following me around doing ghost events. Having good equipment and knowing, like, say you don't have smudges, right? The the grace period is is huge as well but we smudge the ghost so if this is just a regular ghost and not like a demon or a spirit uh we're good for the next like 90 seconds well less than that now but uh, i'm not seeing any orbs and it's oh i'm dead started right on top of me it might be a wraith we didn't check for wraith but that's okay wait you hunt we're at 60 percent right it could be a miling. I'm going to go with miling because of the, the footstep volume. There we go. It was a miling. All right. So that just goes to show that it doesn't matter if you have very good gear or if you're low level, like you're going to die regardless some of the time because that was just an unfortunate position we were in. But positioning is, is key. And I guess we'll do another another contract here uh, and actually survive a contract. Let's go to Willow Street this time. All right. The ghost is hunting again. It's a normal speed ghost. 
it's not a Myling this time. And it's not a Yokai either. It's speeding up like crazy. Could be a Gorio. I'm gonna smudge. And run away. Turn off my equipment. And... Please don't come in here. I don't have a hiding spot. <laughs> okay. Alright, we survived. So I guess in summary here, if you if you want to survive against some beatable odds, the, the biggest thing you gotta know is positioning is key and knowing about the game is is very, very crucial. Alright. Alright, so let's take some sanity pills here. So I can actually think about what I'm saying instead of just getting distracted by the ghost all the time. And let's actually try to figure out this ghost. Well, I kind of talk a little bit more about surviving against some beatable odds. Now there are there are the times. Okay, I turned off the breaker. It's not a gen. It's also not a Diogen, not a Thay, not a Moroi, not a Revenant. Um, didn't do any weird blinking, so it's not an Oni or a Phantom. But in terms of like unbeatable odds, where like like I mentioned in the in the intro of like your friends are trolling you or something like that, the solution for that is just find better friends. <laughs> <laughs> low key but outside of that i mean there are other situations like circumstances that you could very easily survive in if you just knew a little bit and if you've watched my videos you know that like i i mean i'm i'm a fairly new player on paper like i have i have maybe just over 200 hours in the game but I know a lot about the game because of the guides that I've watched and the research that I've done and stuff thanks to the uh, Phasma wiki. But even with that knowledge, I die a lot, even now, even with the knowledge that I have. And I mean, that's not really saying a lot, right? But it just goes to show you that this is not a game that you can just like learn about and then just expect it to just like instantly flip the switch like this is going to be like learning about the game and learning about the ghosts and the curse possessions and the equipment takes time and it re and the cost of that is you dying a lot in your contracts but how are you going to get better if you're just sitting in the truck all day watching ghost stores while your ghosts while your friends go in and like experience the ghost events and learn like the difference between a mare ability and a an airball ghost event right like you're doing yourself a disservice just by being a little truck wookie okay so challenge yourself bump up your difficulty from amateur to intermediate or from intermediate to professional i just recently started playing nightmare from professional because i wanted to get all three evidences um and then learn what type of ghost I was dealing with by the evidence and then pick up on his behavior. And then once I got comfortable with that, I bumped up to the nightmare mode where you only get two evidences. And so now it's more challenging for me. That right there keeps the game from getting like stagnant and boring for me. Okay. And it also allows me to get better because it's, it's forcing me to put the knowledge that I have into practice because like I said, knowledge is nothing without execution. And I still suck at execution a lot of times. Once you get to that point, the game starts becoming less like adrenaline inducing from being so scary to now it's actually fun because you can get payback on your friends that are trolling you and actually learn how to do things like kill them with a tripod. Because at that point, you've already learned about the game. So now you're actually having fun with it. Or just showing off to your friends because you know so much about the game. You've gotten all the apocalypse trophies or whatever, which is the hardest challenge in Phasmo at the at the time of recording this. But yeah, so let's figure out what type of ghost we're dealing with here. It's not a fast ghost. I don't think it's a poltergeist because when the pol whenever it was in here, it should have cleared off that that stuff as well. So, but we found the ghost room. It's right here. I'm gonna set up dots somewhere. And then I'm gonna leave. We could check for Wraith. I don't think it's twins. We need to check spirit box, salt, and UV. Alrighty, it touched the door. Which door? I don't know. Why did I grab another dots? Where are you? Are you here? Sorry. In a way. Okay. Where are you? Where are you? Sorry. Okay. So we have spirit box, which means. Oh, that's what I meant to grab. I meant to grab... Okay, we have ghost riding. 
Oh, it's a spirit. Okay, because we have EMF 5, spirit box, and ghost riding. Okay. Well, there you go. So we're chilling. The spirit hunts at 50% sanity, so I haven't done anything to really to really drop my sanity. I took those sanity pills, so I should be at at least 80. I've been in the light, so I think we're good. But now we have to witness a ghost event, in which case I don't know if I want to stick around for that. So we might just uh we might just get out of here with the uh with the correct ghost type. But yeah, man, so uh, nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope that it helped you in some way, shape, or form. I felt like the majority of it was Phasmo gameplay, but I hope that you got something out of it. The biggest thing that I could say is check out this video on how to easily identify every single ghost. That's going to help you a ton. And then when you're done with that, check out my guide on five tips to survive more hunts instantly, okay? Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And I'll see you in the next one.